So I am working on another version of the Knit Knit Cowl in two new colors. In my left hand, I'm holding on to the background color, and in my right hand, I'm holding on to the color that's making the letters or the contrasting color. The way that I'm working through this, I just want to spend a few minutes and demonstrate with you because as I am working, you can see there are floats. Now I know that most of my work that I um, encourage all of my students to uh, lock their floats or secure them every other stitch of the same color. In this case, I'm not asking you to do that. And I actually designed this project so that you didn't have to do uh, any locking with the exception of one spot. And I wanna show you where that is. So I'm currently working on round 29. So I've just slipped my little marker and I'm ready to begin. So taking a look at the row, the very first stitch after the slipped marker is, we're gonna call it red and yellow for the lack of wanting to get too specific. So it was one stitch of red. Second stitch is yellow. So I'm throwing that with my right hand. The next three stitches are red. So we will pick those. One, two, three, three. There we go. That's three. The next three stitches are yellow. So you see how I'm keeping these somewhat um, evenly spread out on my needle? They're not all bunched up together like this. So I wanna make sure that my knitting is somewhat even on my, on my uh, right hand needle as I'm knitting. And the reason is, as I drag this across, so let me go ahead and do uh, that stitch. So when I drag this across, you see there's that float right there. I want that amount of yarn to be there floating across the back. I want that to be laying flat on the work as the work is laying the way I, we're wanting it to look at the end. So keep those stitches somewhat um, flat as you go. So that was my first yellow. I have two more to go. One, two. So now I have one red background. Now here comes the T. So this letter T has seven stitches across. And this very center one, the one that's the top of this column right here, we're gonna lock this, uh, the floating yarn in this stitch right here. So we need to do um, three stitches. So here's one, two, three. Now the middle stitch, this is the stitch number four. This is where we're going to lock this floating thread. And the reason we're doing that is because this is a fairly big distance for a float to run across. And we really want to secure any floating yarns across the back of our work, at least every inch or so of knitting, just to make sure that they're tacked down nicely. So since this is the only place it needs to happen, I want to make sure to uh, encourage you to try locking this float the way that I teach all my students. So to do that, you are spent your entire cowl holding your yarns in both hands. So you're going to go in to this stitch this, as if you're going to knit it. And you're going to put this uh, background color between the two stitches, or between, sorry, between the two needles, just like you're getting ready to knit it. So if you wanted to, you could, but you're not going to. The next step is wrap the um, yellow, the main color, around your needle, just like you are going to knit it, and then take this background color and slide it back off. You see, slide it off of the needle and pull just the yellow through. I'll do that one more time. Let's back it up, back it up, back it up. Okay, ready? Go in as if you're gonna knit. Bring your background color between the two needles. 
wrap the main color around, or the lettering color, the yellow, the one on your right hand, and then slip this background color back off and pull it through, complete the stitch. So now that's stitch number four. And what that does is it flips these two yarns around each other. Essentially, it wraps the two yarns around, and that's the only time that the main color and contrasting color wrap around each other in this work. So let's do the next three. So one, two, three, and that finishes the letter T. So I'll go ahead and keep going. One background color, one main color, one background color, and I have three to go across the top of the eye. One, two, three, and so on. So I encourage you to work holding your yarns in each hand. So you're doing stranded knitting uh, combination style, which is what this is. And uh, that is how you lock that float on the top of your letter T in the knit-knit cowl. There's one more thing I want to talk to you about. Now I know I didn't finish my row. I did also encourage you to finish, go ahead and finish your sequence before you stop and talk to people. But um, as you're working, decide where you want your yarns to be. So I am taking this uh, color, the color that my letters are, and I always have it over here to the right of my work. So if I'm knitting at home, it's actually sitting in a bowl on the floor to the right of my seat. And then this color, the background color, will sit to the left of me or it will sit um, like in my lap. That way I always have the lettering color, this, this color, in my right hand and I always have this one in my left hand. And if I keep those always in their separate spots, then that keeps the back of the work uh, looking lovely and nice. Now, the only time it looks a little bit different is right here. You'll notice there's a little bit of a difference. That's because right there is the single round of just the background color. And I left it uh, worked only in my background color because that's what I was having you do since we're not locking floats all the way around. So, Thank you so much for watching the tutorial. I hope that you are having the best time knit, knitting your cowl. If you have questions for me, you can always reach out to me uh, through the website, kylewilliam.com, or uh, in the forums on Ravelry, or wherever you can find me as Kyle William. Happy knitting!